Well, <laughs> after what I can only suspect was the mammoth, should we say, going through the bacon verse. <laughs> I do apologize, that was a long video, but oh my, it was it needed to be a long video because going through Penny Mordant's bizarre bacon verse fan fiction, um uh, yeah, it, it, it unfortunately needed to be a long video. So hopefully uh, this is also going to be quite a, fun, a quite a fun video, but it also might be quite a long video as well. So I do apologize if I'm putting out two long videos in one day. But news, as far as I can tell, this is the only source as of yet which is saying this, but this is from the Daily Mail. And according to them, and according to people close to Jacob Rees-Mogg, he is considering running to be the next leader of the Tory party. Now, this makes a lot of sense. We've seen Jacob Rees-Mogg mooted before about being a potential leadership candidate, except he's never really gone for it. Now, is this, shall we say, Jacob's time to try and take the mantle? Because he's talking, and especially in this article when we get into it, about taking over from Sunak, and especially taking over after the loss. So I want to reaffirm this. We have got the Conservative Party openly saying, yeah, we're going to lose the next election, and we're going to lose big. So in that scenario, Sunak will have to step down, and we will have yet another Tory leadership contest. And I've been saying this for a while. The factionism in the Tory party is going to go absolutely wild. Because compared to the last two leadership elections that we've had, there is nothing to offer. There is nothing to offer. You can't go, so, um, yo, so, so, Suella, how about, you know, you be, uh, you know, in charge of the home office or I know I'll make you in charge of the foreign office. There is nothing to offer. So how these different factions can come together and maybe even assume some sort of um, coherency, certainly in a, a post, um, shall we say, loss conservative world, it's going to be interesting to see. But we're going to go diving into this because Jacob Rees-Mogg, Apparently, according to this article, is considering this very seriously. Now, of course, we've seen this type of art article before many years ago when Mog was very, very big and very popular. And remember the whole Mog momentum uh, movement that was tried to start the youth movement around Jacob Rees Mog. Um, yeah, it didn't really last, but there you go. It was a real thing for a while. Um, and of course, he was talking about, you know, taking over. Oh, he's going to, you know, he's the guy, he's the candidate to take over after Theresa May. Um, it didn't really happen. But anyway, we're going to go diving into this because this, um, to be honest, I think sets a, a very interesting course for the future of the Conservative Party and what could happen and the hilarity we could see in this. So, before we go diving into this, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and one donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And of course, there is the YouTube thank you button down below as well. And of course, the Pony Club as well, you can join as well, which also helps support the channel. And you get bells, whistles, and whatnot. And of course, you get access to the videos that I make specifically uh, for my, obviously, my Pony Clubbers and of course, the Patreon people as well. Uh, remember, we did just recently do the big grand review of uh, 2022. Uh, almost went for an hour speaking straight just about the events that went on in, in 2022 itself. And there were a lot, <laughs> to be honest. it was uh, I surprised myself with how much had really happened in 2022. But anyway, uh, on with this. Like I say, this, like I said, as we said, comes to the Daily Mail. It's the only source I can see that is reporting about this. But like I say, interesting times certainly ahead for the Conservative Party. So, as we said, this was from the Daily Mail. The title of Jacob Rees-Mogg considers running to be the next leader of the Tory party. So, Jacob Rees-Mogg is reportedly weighing up a bid to run for the Tory party leadership should Rishi Sunak tank the next general election. 
the former business secretary of 53, is understood to be tempted by the prospect of becoming the standard bearer of the right wing of the party, should they endure a battering at the polling booths. So you can already see this, that Rhys Mogg, you know, being a standard bearer of the right wing of the party, that's not just the right wing of the party. Really, it's the right wing of the, <laughs> shall we say, the, the right wing libertarian part of the, the, part, the party, the free market fundamentalist part of the party. That's what he wants to be leader of. So it's entirely possible. Like I say, he was uh, head of the ERG at one point. So he's certainly got the credentials to do it. But back to it. So the current polls have estimated the Conservatives have been trailing Labour by up to 20 points and with a general election looming as soon as January of 2025. I don't think we'll get to that. I, if, if, Honestly, if we get to January 2025, and we have a, a, a general election uh, at that day, I do not think that will happen. I think in 2023, at some point, there will be a general election because there is no way in heaven or earth that Sunak can survive until the end of 2023. With the May local elections coming up is going to be his first big challenge. There's already talks of other potential rebellions in the works. The strikes that are heavily affecting Sunak and his government could also potentially bring him down. There's just so much going on. I would be shocked if we get to this time next year and Sunak has managed to survive. I really will be truly shocked. But, hey, you never know. So, uh, back to it. So the then Brexit Opportunities Minister has also said to have been considering putting his name in among the runners and riders after his close ally and ex-Prime Minister Boris Johnson stepped down in the summer. Now, that's interesting. That is very interesting because there's now a clear picture forming of does Boris Johnson actually want to run again? Might he instead decide he wants to be the kingmaker in the party? Because a lot of people... Uh, if you if you if you've been uh, like I do, I watch Conservative Home uh, very often, and re very recently there was a big poll about who was your favourite backbencher and who came second. It was Boris Johnson. So still in the non-parliamentary party, there is a lot of support for Boris Johnson. Even in the parliamentary party, we have seen that there is support. Maybe not strong support, but there is support for him still there. So if Johnson decides he's going to become a kingmaker and step aside, that makes sense. Or maybe he goes, you make me, I don't know, your, your second or, or, or whatever. Then potentially that is what Johnson could certainly see be doing. I could certainly see Johnson deciding to take that role and not being, shall we say, the leader, but more a uh cheerleader, which is really what Boris Johnson's role should have always been, being the cheerleader uh, for his, uh, sort of the leaders, and sort of trying to pass their policy through to the wider public. That's really what his role sort of should have been. But anyway, back to it. So Jacob Rees-Mogg is reportedly weighing up uh, the bid to run for the Tory party leadership should Sunak tank the next election. Mr. Rees-Mogg is said to have been tempted to run for leader after Johnson was finally forced to accept his support was crumbling and his premiership was doomed. One source close to the former business secretary said, Jacob thought about it overnight, but decided that his loyalty to Boris meant that he had not uh, put a team in place to be able to win a contest while others had. Also, Liz was quick out of the blocks, which meant it was difficult for him to run against her, as we saw with Rishi Sunak. Uh, uh, bid. So in the end, Mr. Rees-Mogg joined other Boris Johnson loyalists, such as Nadine Doris, in backing Miss Truss, whose then time as Prime Minister infamously ended after less than two months. And bear in mind, that is the exact same idea that they have. Liz Truss and, and certainly uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg, they are the same type. Those ideas were what he wanted. So if he was to actually seriously become prime minister and actually start to seriously push these far-right, crazy libertarian ideas, 
which bear in mind are very, very unpopular, not only in his own party, but in the UK electorate as well, who do not want these crazy right-wing libertarian ideas in, it it will not be an easy win should he be uh, leader of the, the Conservative Party and try to sell these ideas to the British public at a general election. So, the current polling has estimates that the Conservatives have been trailing Labour, uh, trailing Labour by up to 20 points. Uh, oh, no, hang on. Uh, it is obviously understood uh, that members of the right wing of the Conservative Party have agreed to step back because of the reputational damage caused by Mistress's disastrous 44 days in Downing Street. And step back is right because these crazy ideas were what crashed the economy and what only made her last 44 days. And as we've said, that block is still there. Trust was an embarrassment for them, for their policies to become forward. But they are still convinced that their policies can still work. Even as she was stepping down, Liz Trust was adamant that her ideas would have worked and what was needed for Britain to survive and thrive, as I think she said. But I, as I said, they're still there. There's still that block in there. And it's really worrying that they think that they can get away with you know, <laughs> flaunting some of these crazy ideas, turning us into a Singapore on the Thames. But there you go. Um, so where were we? So here we are. So, however, the current favor, favorite for the leadership of the right of the Tory party is the rising star Kimi Badnock, who gained traction after a strong performance among MPs and grassroots groups in the summer of the leadership hustings. Um, absolutely not. So, first of all, Kimi Badnock might be in the right wing of the party. But she's not in the same faction as Jacob Rees-Mogg. Absolutely no way. Remember, Liz Truss was the that Jacob Rees-Mogg's faction's pick. So she was not their, their candidate. And one of the things that Kimi Badnock certainly demonstrated during that leadership hustings was that she can talk about culture war stuff, but it didn't really work it did not gain the traction that they've wanted. And the Conservatives have been trying desperately to try and import some of the culture war uh, talking points from America for the past couple of years, but it has not taken root. It's not taken off how they have wanted it to. So because there's been failed and because that's all she really knows how to talk about, any sort of serious talk about policy, she is doomed. So continues with another option would be Home Secretary Suella Braverman, uh, who could be see her own popularity sought among the party should she bring an end to the channel uh, channel migrant crisis. Well, she's absolutely not going to bring an end to this migrant crisis. Um, these hardline policies that she's trying to set out, again, just as Pretty Patel tried to set out as well, are going to be seen as a failure. And remember, Pretty Patel is seen by the Conservative Party as a failure of a Home Secretary. And Suella Braverman has all these grand plans, like the Rwanda plan, they're trying to sort of, uh, you know, make it harder. We've got the law coming, or at least the bill coming next year to say, if you arrive in the UK illegally, then you cannot apply for asylum, which is certainly, I think, illegal under international law. So there's going to be certainly be challenges by that uh, to the high court. There is all kinds of stuff that is going to sort of doom Suella Braverman to be known just as Priti Patel became known to be a failure in the Home Office. Of course, former Prime Minister Theresa May acknowledged that Liz Truss's mini-budget had a, quote, impact on the Conservative Party's reputation for sound money. Of course it did. You know, th these, these people, certainly in the, in the free market fundamentalist faction, as we've described them before, as far as they are concerned, their ideology works. Have you got any real world examples? Absolutely not. But they are convinced that these crazy, widely libertarian ideas, if they bring them in, will somehow work because the ideology tells them that this should work. But as we saw with Liz Truss, when she brought in these ideas, the market just tanked because it knew that these ideas were not going to work. Um, 
She also said that Rishi Sunak uh, was trying to rebuild that trust. He's certainly failing very, 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 very big on that front. It comes of sources uh, close to the backbenchers saying that Mr. Rees-Mogg is not ruling out making a bid for the leadership should the Conservatives lose the next general election. Rees-Mogg is said to have, quote, believe that the right needs to have a candidate after what appears to be an inevitable election defeat. Election guru Sir John uh, Cruz's most recent polls do suggest that Labour holds a 20-point lead, enough for a landslide general election victory over the Conservatives. But despite the strong disagreeing with the swathes of Sunak's adm uh, administration policies, Mr. Rees-Mogg has urged his colleagues to remain loyal to minimise the damage at the next election, the Express has reported. Um, they are not going to remain loyal. If you know you are going to lose this next general election, why on earth, as you as a Conservative MP, knowing that you are going to lose the next election, why on earth are you going to be loyal to Rishi Sunak? You've got no reason to maintain your loyalty. So it comes as the former Prime Minister, Theresa May, said that she remained hopeful that Mr. Sunak can still swing their recent dismal poll numbers in their favour. Absolutely not. Um, the economy is not recovering, as, as at least certainly Sunak had hoped. We are seeing the economic damages coming through. The cost of living crisis is going to hit even harder uh, soon in a couple of in a couple of months. You've got all kinds of stuff, all the rebellions coming up that is not going to be, be able to cause massive problems. It's going to be, hey, trust me, we are in for a very, very manic couple of months um, coming up, that's for sure. Um, meanwhile, the ex-cabinet minister, Nadine Doris, has warned Mr. Sunak yesterday, if the polls keep sliding, Boris Johnson would be in Downing Street next year. And like I said, we've said this before, those May local election results are going to be crucial. But can even Sunak make it to May? <laughs> we, we, we don't know. We generally seriously don't know. But I think a lot of people are going to see those election numbers and those the, the fact that we have such a low turnout and that we saw at the last local election under Boris Johnson, the fact that Conservatives who normally are a very, very big group that have a big majority for turnouts, didn't turn out. So are they going to turn out for Sunak? I don't think they will. I even think they know they're embarrassed about going out and voting for Conservatives. So they are going to use that opportunity to send a message to Sunak that we do not, um, sort of certainly don't want you, we either want Sunak in or we disagree with you in some way, shape or form. Like I say, we'll see what happens when we get to those uh, May local elections. Um, anyway, but she did say, that she, Nadine Doris continued to say, said that the former Prime Minister was the only person who could keep many Tory MPs, such as those in the Red Wall, in their seats at the next election, saying, I think the local elections in May are going to be absolutely difficult for us, but Rishi Sunak won't walk. She told the Express, it will take a bit longer than that, but I think there is a chance if the polls keep sliding by this time next year, we will see Boris Johnson back in Downing Street. Many of the people who are anti-Boris realise that they are nothing without their seat. They have no voice. No one is interested in what they will have to say. No one will even, not even down at the job centre. Oh, my words. Oh, Nadine. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. <laughs> Cruel indeed. Um, but yeah, wow. Um, does he stand a chance? And I realize I did want to do quite a short video, but never mind, here we are. Uh, <laughs> so does he stand a chance? Um, possibly. I think it entirely depends on how this next year plays out. I said it before, I think there will be a general election in 2023. I really think there will. I think Sunak hasn't got any chance of doing anything. He can't pass anything because there's going to be rebellions and there's going to be a rebellion against that rebellion on top of that rebellion. We saw that with the wind farms and the resulting, you know, giving the net zero scrutiny group a coal mine to, to placate them for lifting the uh, onshore wind farm ban. And yet, 
Reese Mogg wants to come in with that free market fundamentalist side of the party, continuing very much with those Liz Trust policies and that wacky right wing you know, free market fundamentalist mindset. Remember, Jacob Reese Mogg is a big proponent of look, guys. All we have to do to make Brexit work is just lower our tariffs zero for everything to everybody, and it will somehow work. It won't, because there are reasons why that won't work, and we've discussed them many a time. But that's the kind of thing Reese Mogg wants. Reese Mogg wants to get rid of workers' rights. He wants to get rid of the NHS. There's so much stuff in his ideological playbook he wants to get rid of and yet most of the british people most of like the british voting public do not agree with him even the vast majority of conservative voters do not agree remember liz truss as soon as she started putting forward these policies her own popularity started to tank so what's his chance of getting in i think in the event of a loss i suspect you will see a, almost a revolving door in the conservative party i i really do think you will see an absolute revolving door i think you will see a full-on civil war and it is going to be absolutely glorious glorious to watch them tear out pieces of each other because you've got nadine doris saying yeah, all those red wall um, MPs that aren't loyal to Boris, he's the only guy who can save you because guess what? Those You are nothing without Boris. They won't listen to you in any way, shape or form. And you are nothing without your seat, not even down at the job center. What? And I'm, I'm sorry, but she is ready. She is gearing up <laughs> for, um, for an attempt to bring back Boris. And of course, we've already talked about a potentially a wild return of before of, of Boris Johnson. Like I say, go watch that video about that potentially that could happen as well next year. Uh, again, linking in with the May low collections. But you say next year, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be very, very interesting. So as always, guys, like I say, uh, thank you very much for watching. Like I say, please do remember to hit that like, share, subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a rotation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And as always, guys, thank you very much uh, for helping to support the channel. Like I say, uh, thank you button down below, the Pony Club as well, uh, too. Uh, thank you so much for everyone uh, for supporting the channel. And as always, guys, uh, we'll see you all next time.